Hey what's up guys, Kerry over here and today let me tell you a little story about myself. Since I was born I grew up with the Windows machine, you can see on the left of the screen, it's a Surface Pro 2. And I'm switching to this machine to a new MacBook Pro, the newest version, 2017, with a 15 inch if you want to know. In this video I'm trying to answer this question, is macOS dope or no? First, let me introduce you to the pros I found by using the MacBook Pro for just one day, but let me show you some killing features, some killing Windows features. Let me begin with the first one of my list. I called it the Spacebar Preview, and this is the most impressive thing I've ever seen of the system. It works perfectly and it allows you to open every file, every, every kind of file, such as Photoshop, Illustrator, without using a software to open it. This feature is very dope because you aren't wasting your time anymore and just you open it just simply by clicking the spacebar. And the question here I want to ask to Windows is will Windows use these features one day because it just kill everything on Mac? The next one is Touch ID. I'm pretty sure you know this feature appeared with the iPhone 5S a few years ago now and on the MacBook Pro it solves everything. Every problem you had with a password you don't have anymore because you just Put your fingers, every fingers you want, just uh, this, 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 or maybe a multiple fingers if you want to set up a multiple password with uh, multiple fingers. It's just way faster than typing a password. Speaking about functionality, there is a huge chunk thing of the new MacBook Pro, or even in the 2016 MacBook Pro, there is a huge trackpad. I'm pretty sure you've seen this before. Uh, in the reviews. Straightforward, these things kills everything in the Windows world. This thing is so huge and so useful by gestures such as the launchpad with four fingers, three fingers to switch off between desktops, three fingers by the top, three fingers by the bottom. There is everything, every gesture you want just by this huge trackpad. Its size is not uh, a weak point because there is a good palm rejection and there is no issues about this. Speaking of output, there is something that blows your mind in just one second. Let me tell you a little something with just the speakers. Just listen. I'm now at 40% of the total volume and if I push it to the limit of 100%, my neighbor's uh, neighborhood are listening this. I'm now at 80%. I don't know if you hear me, but this thing is very loud. And now I'm going to put this to 100%. I'm now at 100%. I'm going to, to decrease the sound because it's very uh, loud uh, if you push it to the limit. As you can hear, uh, those speakers are very loud and you can use it with every kind of software such as Premiere Pro, Final Cut and you don't need uh, to, to wear some headphones just to, to dive yourself in music. And I don't know how they did it, uh, when you see the body, the thin and light is just the next point. Thin, light and very powerful. That three words to describe the new MacBook Pro in its overall, as you can see, above the design, which is very, very, very nice. Indeed, as you can see with some shots I've done with the Panasonic G7 and the old 4K content without any issues on Final Cut, which is the main software you, you're going to use if you buy a Mac. Battery life is also another point because you can use these things for a long, long time. It's a bit in contrary with the other reviews you can see because uh, those people are speaking about battery life sucks. But in my case, there is nothing to, to reproach uh, by, uh, by the day. I'm just uh, leaving 10% uh, and I'm using this for an hour and a half. Uh, watching some uh, movies or just listening to music and just to record this video. You can do 4K editing for about 3 or 4 hours, but in that particular case the GPU and the CPU are pushing to the limit. It explains uh, 3 or 4 hours uh, comparing to 10 or even more uh, 
hours of surfing the web, browsing the web. Now we've seen the bright sides, let me tell you some negative points you found if you want to buy this. The first is obvious for everybody in the world, it is price tag. I bought this thing for 2800 euros. This thing is very very expensive for what it is, but it's a very powerful machine as we could see before. In this case you pay for the performance, the design and also the battery life. It's just a really good balanced machine, you can use everywhere without any issues. The second negative point uh, I found with using this machine is a touch bar which is really great to have but not a killing feature. In a nutshell the touch bar is a very cool feature but it's not like everything we've told uh, before the space bar or even uh, the spotlight I don't to speak about this but these things is cool but not too much. What can I say about my macOS user experience? I've been using this for two days, comparing with my 10 years using experience with Windows. This thing is very enjoyable and very secured, I don't speak about this point. And uh, it's so hard to come back to the other system when you just taste the MacBook experience. This thing is very, very cool and very enjoyable. That's all for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know in the comments below and meanwhile, Rendezvous to the next video.